Okay, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. Today our topic is on autopilot. As you can see here, basically, and basically, an autopilot. What does it do? Can somebody tell me? What does the autopilot do? It steers the ship automatically. Replaces the helmsman. Right? Steers more efficiently than the helmsman. What else? Gives you alarms. Somebody was saying, of course, alarm. What else? Anything else? You can also do course alterations on autopilot. Right? Yeah. Now, basically, how does the autopilot work? The heart of the autopilot is the control unit. What you are doing? You are giving a compass feed to the control unit, and your course set is also coming into the control unit. So, comparison will be done between the course set and the compass course or the compass heading. The difference based on the difference and based on some settings in the control like radar and counter radar, which we will come to later on. Based on that, the control unit will give some output saying, okay, I need starboard 5 or starboard 10 help. That will go to the amplifier, error amplifier here. The error amplifier also gets a feedback from the rudder to say what is the current position of the rudder. Right? So, those, that has to be compared to the current position and the rudder requirement. That would give a final signal to the telemotor transmitter. Generally, this is what happens on the bridge, and then you have a telemotor receiver generally in the steering flat, which operates the steering gear and finally operates the yeah. rudder. Right? When the rudder is operated, obviously the compass course will change. Compass course changes, this difference reduces, and the same cycle goes on. This is generally how the Autopilot works or looking at this block diagram. Right? It's very simple. Don't try to make it complicated. It is very simple. Only thing is in the control unit, you must have heard this term called as PID. Proportional Integral and Derivative. I will come to that control a little later. But before this, we got to understand what are the controls on the panel of the autopilot. Because whenever you change over from hand steering to autopilot, you will have to look at these controls. Right? I think the first control there is the rudder control. And uh, basically, the rudder control determines the sensitivity of the system. Now, as I go on, you can just go to the page on controls. And if I miss out any control, let me know. So the first control is the rudder control, which basically determines the sensitivity of the system. In other words, it says how much of helm is to be used per degree of course. Let's say 1 degree helm per degree of course, 2 degree helm per degree of course, half a degree helm per degree of course, depending on the setting. So rudder control determines the sensitivity of the system. Some autopilots call it as sensitivity control will govern the sensitivity that means how much helm to be used. Now we also want that the helm should start coming back. For that there is something known as counter rudder. Now counter rudder does not only bring the helm back because the helm will actually have come back with the rudder control itself as the difference reduces the amount of rudder required is less so that would have brought the rudder back anyway. But counter rudder does something more. It senses how fast the ship is coming back or the uh, rudder control is acting. And on that basis, it gives counter helm sometimes even on the other side. Let's say for example, you are steering a course of 090 and your compass has gone to 088. So it is 2 degrees off course multiplied by rudder sensitivity or the rudder control. Let's say it is 4 degrees of helm. It has gone to starboard 4. Moment it comes to 88.5, you will find the rudder control coming to midship or maybe even when it is 089, it could still be giving 2-3 degrees 4 delta. 
so that it steadies on 090. So this counter rudder which is given or how fast the ship is coming back on that basis the counter rudder functions. So is it clear? Yes, the counter rudder should always be set after the rudder goes through. When you are setting the controls, when you change your autopilot and set the controls, the counter rudder setting will be after the rudder control setting. Right, so first rudder control, next <coughs> counter rudder control. What is the next control then? <coughs> yaw. Okay. Now what is yaw? What do you understand by the term yaw? Yaw basically means change of the heading of the ship due to wind. Right? When there are strong winds, the ship's heading will change. And that is basically yaw. Now you got to differentiate between two things. One is the heading of the ship changing due to the vessel going off course. And second is the heading of the ship changing due to yaw. These are two different things. If the heading of the ship has changed due to yaw, do you need rudder to bring it back? No, sir. No. no. Right? But if the heading changes due to off course, you need rudder to bring back. Now, how will the autopilot know that the change of heading is due to off course or due to yaw? That's the question. Because he only comes to know that the compass force has changed. Right? For yaw, you don't have to give an help, but off course, you have to give it. So how does the autopilot differentiate between the two? Well, very honestly speaking, it doesn't differentiate. But when by yaw, what we do is we introduce a time delay. So what you're trying to say, I'm just saying hypothetically, within two seconds, if the ship doesn't come back, then use helm to bring the ship back. Which means the rudder control will become effective after a time delay. How much time delay is governed by the yaw control? If the winds are strong, you may have to keep the yaw setting higher. You may want to give not 2 but 3 or 4 seconds. If the wind is less, the yaw control will be low. You may want to give only 1 second or half second or whatever for the vessel to come back on its own due to yaw. If that doesn't happen, the rudder control will become effective. So yaw only delays the effect coming into effect of the rudder control. So that if the deviation is due to the wind, then it will get countered on its own. Is this clear now? What is yaw control? Yes, sir. Right? So yaw functions in this way. What else is there? Permanent helm. Permanent helm. Now sometimes you will have this permanent helm. You got to compare this with manual steering. I'm sure most of you must have done manual steering. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very nice. If you've done manual steering, have you realized sometimes you're steering, you got to keep a helm permanently to two or three degrees to port or starboard? Yes, sir. And the ship remains stable. Yes, sir. This could be due to currents, winds, whatever factors, weather factors. Right? So in the autopilot, the term used is permanent helm, which means if you fit permanent helm of say 2 or 3 degrees, that particular point, 2 degrees or 3 degrees, will now act as the midship. And the rudder will operate about that midship point. The midship is not 0 now, midship is let's say 2 degrees more. Is it clear what is permanent helm? Yes, okay. yes, what is the next? Speed. Speed. Why do you need speed on the autopilot? Because if the speed is slow, we will need more help. If your speed is less, you will need more, more help. help. If your speed is higher, you will need less help to bring in the same alteration. So the rudder control sensitivity, one of the factors is speed. Now this doesn't mean at, at lower speed, if the speed was not there, suppose there was no speed control on the autopilot, then when your speed goes down, you will have to go and change the rudder setting, the rudder control to make it more sensitive. And when your speed increases, so to avoid you going and doing the setting, the speed is directly fed in. Today, most of the autopilots, the speed comes in from the logs or from the 
GPS, right? So you don't have to figure it manually. It does come there, and there are other control settings you don't have to keep changing. It will automatically sensitive will be governed by the speed. Clear? Good. What is the next? Rudder limit. Rudder limit. Now, let's say you want to alter course by 40 degrees. But you want to do it slowly. So in hand steering, what do you do? You will tell the helmsman, okay, starboard 10. And you will wait, ship will turn slowly. If you want to turn fast, you would say starboard 20 and turn faster. Right? Obviously, if you are turning faster, your helm should come to midship, etc. fast. If you are turning slowly, it will take more time. Right? So that is the rudder limit. That means I am giving it a limit. If I am doing an alteration on autopilot by 40 degrees and I want her to turn at 10 degrees helm only, the rudder limit will be set at 10 degrees. But if I don't want that 10 degrees and I want the autopilot to use its own programming etc. to alter by 40 degrees, then I can take off the rudder limit and then alter course. So there is no rudder limit. So the choice of there should or should not be rudder limit is up to me. Right, up to the operator. He will decide whether he wants to use rudder limit or not. But if you are using it, you are specifying how much the rudder can be used on autopilot. Generally, there will be an alarm associated with it. Once the rudder reaches that limit, you will get an alarm. This also is helpful for you in off course. Let's say, for example, you are used a sensitivity of 2 degrees helm per degree off course on the rudder control. If you've gone 5 degrees off course, your rudder is already 10 degrees. Right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. If you go more than 5 degrees off course, the rudder required is more than 10 degrees, then you will get an hour. So, rudder limit will help you in this way also. So in addition to off course, you will also have an off course alarm, but in addition to that, the rudder will also help you. In, the rudder limit will help you in giving you <coughs> or letting you know at least how much of rudder is being used. And if it is more than the limit set, you will get the alarm. alarm. Right? Yeah. What is the next? Off course. off course alarm. Off course alarm is very simple, isn't it? I have set a course of 090 as we said. And I want an alarm if she goes more than 2 degrees off course. So I could have 2 degrees off course. Which means 088092 either side I will get an uh, alarm if she goes more than the limit set. Right now this limit setting obviously will depend on a lot of factors, open sea, confined waters, coastal passage. Right? So depending on I'm sure you're aware of these conditions. And depending on various conditions you can set the alarms. Of course alarm as well as rudder limit. Somebody may say rudder limit of five degrees is enough. Fine, it's your choice. Somebody wants 10 degrees, your choice. Same way, of course, alarm. Somebody may say 2 degrees, good enough. Somebody says 4 or 5. So, whatever makes you comfortable in the circumstances, you should choose that alarm. And have it in mind that I have chosen this, I will get alarm like this. Clear? Right. Okay. What else? The controls, any other controls? Nothing? Both. So, are the controls clear to you? Yes, yes sir. sir. Anybody, any other controls which anyone has come across? Sometimes instead of yaw, they use the term as weather control. Some autopilots. Same thing, same. So, nothing, all covered, all controls? <coughs> okay, then we'll take a short break, 2 3 minutes or 5 minutes at the most, and then we'll start with the PID. If you want, you can freshen up and come. Thank you.